got to play founders of Teotihuacan. All right, so this game obviously is fun. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get into it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because board games are amazing and that's what we do here at Legends of Nirvana. Do you know, I just found out that our daughter has a board game club at her school. Cool. I feel like we should have known about this and have uh, should have... Uh... I think we'll probably blow their minds if we send our <laughs> games over there. But I think we should. So anyway, um, hey, you know, check out. See if your school also has a board game thing for your kids. All right. So, Randy, tell us more about this one. So this, this, game. this game was released in 2022. It's a one to four player game. There's actually a separate rule book. So it came entirely. out this year? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's so, a new one. Yeah, I just got it like what, two weeks ago. It's a hot off the presses. Uh, yeah, one to four players. Uh, there is a complete separate rule book for solo play, which is pretty cool. Uh, 45 to 60 minutes, age 14 and up, designed by Flip Glowatz. Uh, art is by Chewy De Leon. And this is probably my favorite, coolest name ever right here. Odysseus Stamoglau. I'm sure wow. I'm probably mispronouncing it, but I like Odysseus Stamaglau. Alexander Zawada. Uh, published by Board and Dice Games. The MSRP for this is $50. Uh, you can find it at Miniature Market for $35, and Cardhouse has it for $34.59. It's the cheapest I saw. So um, It's out there. Yeah, it's out there. It's just Go recently out there. Go looking. All right. So now let's talk about overall quality of pieces. So um, we use our branded resources, but your standard fare is these generic cubes, um, different colors for different colors of resources. Um, you do get these tiles. Um, I'm not going to lie. I, the art in the tile is, I don't know. I wasn't a huge fan, but that's more theme. Um, but, you know, the tiles are just standard tiles. There's nothing good, bad. They're not, I don't feel like they're lemon finish, or if there are, they're very minimal. Yeah, I think they're minimally lemon. There's Min a little bit of a finish. Minimally. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, and then you, they're all pretty generic cardboard chits or um, wooden pieces. So, overall, I can't, I'm, I, I mean, there is a lot of bits, but it is a pretty high price point. I'm going to go with a six. I'm going to go with a five. I barely am giving it a five because of the fact that I think that it's an impractical scoring mechanism they have on this. It's a very narrow strip around the perimeter of the board. And it, you, given the fact that you're putting tiles on the board and you're taking things off of the board to pay, you're going to bump it. We bumped it several times during the gameplay. And it's just, it was kind of a, a bad design, I think, as far as... Why didn't they do it around this board? Yeah, I mean, that would have made more sense than this. Made a thicker board perimeter on that and then and not had it on the individual players it, it it just didn't make any sense why they put it there yeah i mean so okay so you gave I'll a, five, give it a right? five because of that i don't think i don't think it deserves a six because that is a real hindrance to the game well board. i'm trying to be nervous it has a board yeah so it has a board. it's a two-piece board you have to assemble for the main board oh i did yeah it's a puzzle that's piece. lame okay um Maybe you're right. Maybe it's more fun. All right. So now let's talk about um, actual theme. So the theme, obviously, is the founders of uh, this. Teotihuacan. Right. Um, Miranda can't talk today. So, uh, but basically, you're trying to build your different city, and you're trying to put tiles to build this up. Um, kind of loose. Uh, very, yeah. very loose. Um, we well, are building a pyramid. And that's about it. You don't get an opportunity to build a freaking pyramid. Well, we It's didn't. not long enough. <laughs> we didn't. Your dad got part of it built. That's all he did, and we all lost epically. Okay, so... Ah, <laughs> uh, that's gameplay. But talking about this, I, honestly, I'm not a huge fan of the art. I don't think the art... Well, the tiles don't do anything for... Yeah, I think the mask tiles are kind of cool. The masks are kind of cool. Like, I wish they would have done something along those lines. Um, some of the nagranography is fine, but as far as, like, the tiles themselves, I think they're ugly. Um, so, I, hmm. Well, I mean, the the civilizations, the buildings in the civilization weren't the most attractive things, especially from an aerial view. Listen, we were got. down there. I still thought they were pretty. They were cool, but they weren't. 
they were all stones and you know they're, they're right. just I buildings. Don't, I don't like like the way the um... there's nothing I mean I don't think there's that much they could have done to make it more exciting more interesting yeah, it's I think just maybe it's, color palette well the color palette yeah they could have adjusted a little bit but I mean that's about it that's a, just a personal preference then um, I don't think it's anything outstanding, but I mean, the buildings do look well, that's like, I'm just saying, you know, I, Aztec buildings. I'm just sorry. Recently, we've seen so much beautiful games and beautiful art. Oh, yeah. When you, when you compare it to that. Well, yeah, I'm saying, if you, you try to compare it to Wonderland's War or you know, the foundations of Rome, it's not going to stand up well. It, it, well. Exactly. And that is what they're competing against, right? So it's a new release and it can't compete well with some of the other games out of the market, especially... Tetris style games. Well, yeah, I mean, this, this one is, in essence, a, a direct comparison to Foundations of Rome because it's a tile laying game that's buildings that would have been in the, not quite the same time period, but still, you know, ancient buildings. Yeah. So, see, the, I, I, think, I think you're right. It's a direct comparison, and I don't think that they achieved this on theme when you compare it to Civilizations of Rome. I mean, do I think it's bad? No. I mean, it's okay. But when you compare it to the other games out there, I have some concerns for this game. Um, you know, the then the pieces really kind of let you down, but we kind of already judged that. But for theme wise, I, I'm still not not very high. I'm I'm willing to give it a five and a half for theme, but yeah. it's not I, very I, strong. That's where I'm at too. I mean, I don't think it's exciting the theme. It's just it is. I mean, it, you're playing tiles, and it doesn't really carry over. Yeah, but if they had played up on these masks a little bit more, mm -hmm. like, and I didn't even mind the the pattern thing they could have done a little bit more there and it would have been a yeah a lot more fun like you could have been yeah so i there's little elements that if they had taken it farther they would have done better um but then you know so anyway there it is five and a half all right so now let's talk about the rule book um you were yeah. talking i was nodding of course um, uh there's tw it's a 20 page rule book uh, it was a little, I was expecting this to be a really light game. There was more to this than I expected. So it was kind of a shock when I got in here and started reading the rules because I had to take my time and reread a few things to make sure I understood. I was expecting a very simple tile laying game. That's not what this was. You were mistaken on yeah, that. There's, mistaken I on mean, that. there's a lot more meat to this than I expected. Uh, the, the book structured nicely. It's got... Uh, the first several pages are just setting up the game. It's actually three pages of setup and the two pages of components before that. Um, then you've got the the, st the structure of play, which is just basically all the different actions you take. Um, and then uh, and it's got build to actions and influence actions, which are the two major categories of actions. Then you've got kind of the final round and scoring at the end. So it's typical structuring of a book. It's nothing outstanding, but it was clear and there weren't any questions when we actually got to playing it. It was just getting, understanding. Yeah. Once I was able to interpret it and be able to talk to tell you all, there was no questions really during the gameplay. So I, I think it did its job pretty well. Um, there, there is a cheat sheet on the back for the different worship tiles, which are the uh, red, blue, and green kind of a uh, bonus tiles that you can collect during it and then also appendix for the discs and for the pyramid rewards inside the book i wish they would have had a cheat sheet for that but it's in the back of the book we just had to keep it handy because the iconography is okay but not great i mean we had we did have to look up the individual tiles just the first few times to make sure we understood exactly what they meant yeah um I'll probably go ahead and give the rulebook a seven. Okay. All right. So now let's actually talk about gameplay. So I did think you you, you brushed on this and the fact that it, it was a lot more in depth than we originally anticipated. Um, and I think that was actually a good thing. Yeah. Um, my, and this is truly telling um, before we get kind of into my biggest complaint is that it wasn't long enough. And so we'll talk about why that is. So basically you have three rounds. Well, you start the three players, you have three rounds. You've been two or four, you have four rounds. Okay, so we were just playing with wrong numbers, what you're telling me? No, I'm just telling you that's the way it's designed. It's for All three right. players, it's three rounds. Yeah, so three players, three rounds, but then you start out with um, five... Again, three players. It's varies player count. Okay, whatever. I'm going to say we're playing like a three player, that way you guys can understand because this is what we dealt with. All right, 
Um, look in the game if you want more room bulk. Okay, so basically you end up starting with five different things and each round you lose one of your workers. So just kind of keeping that in mind. Now, when you go to send your workers to the different locations, if you're the first one, you do end up gaining a bonus and those change every round based on a uh, random rotation. So if I were to go, for example, this spot here and I put any number of my workers on here, a max of three with a total height of four, which gives you a power of four, um, that you would get this bonus. Now, however, um, if you go to someone else's, so say, here we go. Um, say I wanted to do an action that someone had already placed. I'm going to can go over top of them, but I'm actually increasing the power. I get to use their power along with mine to complete an action. So I thought that was actually interesting and mm -hmm. very cool. I thought that was an, in I really like that mechanism. I think that was really good. And you can play as many discs at once as you want. If right. you want it, if you want it to be four power, you could stack three discs on top of the right. starter. But top. then you lose three actions. So right. I don't necessarily. I did that the first round and it kind of bit me, but then again, I did win. So it's hard to say. Yeah, it's, it, yeah I think there's a lot of strategy that you're gonna have to work through over here. All right, so then the next aspect of it is, is so, so you actually taking an action. So you place a disc, right? But there's a couple of things going on in the board. You can build resource tiles, you can build uh, worship tiles, and then you can build on your pyramid. Um, there's also counter actions to that. So if you, if you go to the spot to build a resource tile, you can also just gain resources instead of building a resource tile. And then, or you can build a religious building or um, turn one of your religious building tokens in to get victory points or some other positive thing or meet the requirements and get VP, whatever. Uh, then the other, this last one is you can build, get a tile for your overall temple, which gives you bonus points based on the buildings in those different sectors that that's particularly located um, as well. Or the opposite is just build up victory points. It's just, trade. It lets you trade in your bonus tiles or and build up your victory points. Right, or just trade. Okay, so there's that piece of it as well. Um, then, so you take those actions, but the over, so there's a couple of things going on. So when you go to place your tiles, first, the first thing you're gonna do though is place your center. So when you build your pyramid, depending on like, so for example, I placed an orange tile here, any time that an orange is on these two sectors, because it's in the middle, it will gain two victory points. However, um, if it's on the second tier, right? So if you keep building up your pyramid, each that orange is gonna be worth three. So then you have a three and a two, and that would be five points per of these orange buildings. So you can build up this quite a bit of um, victory point counting for the same building if you build up your tower. So there's that piece of it that you kind of want to be aware of. There's also the green and the blue, but you have to have resources to do that. So to build your resources tiles, um, but you have to have an area adjacent to those resources tiles to actually create those resources and hold them um, because they actually take up slots on your board. So you have to be careful about your placement um, and because if you want to place a tile and you place it over um, your resources, the resources go away. So it's not necessarily a good thing. Um, so, but there's a lot of there. Oh, and the other piece of it is, is you can only place where your meeple is at. So your meeple goes from the side of the board around each time you take your turn. And if you were to lay down a tile, it has to be on that side of the board that they're located, the two spheres that they're in between. And that includes the pyramid in the middle. So right. you, know, you, you are very limited on where you can make placements. You have to plan in advance. Like, all right, I've got three, you know, I have four tokens. I'm not going to double stack of them or anything. So I've got three actions, which, cause I had to sit there and be like, all right, I'm going to get resources this turn because I need to be on that side of the board to build the thing and do. So you really do have, mm -hmm. so there is a lot of meat here. Um, but I will say by the end of the third round, I didn't, I feel like it just started. Like mm -hmm. I really did feel like, okay, yeah, because you they take away one of your workers every round, so your turns get shorter. Right, which is unusual because yeah. normally it's the opposite. And um, like I didn't get to do anything. Like I didn't get to do much. Yeah. And I'm sitting here being like, listen, I'm just strategizing, and I didn't get to do much, and I didn't like it very much. Okay, so it was kind of like I loved, I loved the different mechanisms in this game. I like the stacking and building on the power. I, I, you know, I even liked having to to time out your 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 stuff just right but it's too short i re it's it's bugging me like this is a really <laughs> big fault i'm having with this game because 
you just feel like you're starting to get traction. I personally think it's another game. I, the, of these type of games, I, I they bug me too, but I, it's a good kind of bug. It's like the game, you want to play it again because you got to the end and it cut off before you wanted it to. You wanted your engine built up to where you could do things. There's not really an engine per se. There's resource building in this, but it's not really an engine per se, but you do have kind of a scoring mechanism you're building. Listen, so, I had all these I didn't get to use. I've got yeah, a problem with this. you got to pick your strategy. I, I sacrificed building my pyramid in order to get all my tiles played. I got all but one done. You know, it's a matter of strategizing and figuring out what is most beneficial for you. Yeah, well, the other part is, is I can't fill my board out, okay? Like, <laughs> that's, listen, what, that's what it comes down to. You didn't get to fill everything. No, 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 no. It's, it's multiple things. I got all these tiles I couldn't use. I got, I couldn't, and I didn't build too much. I'm not even close, okay? Like, you're not even close. Mm -hmm. So that is actually my biggest problem. And I think... Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm going to play it again. I may play it a second time, but I think it's going to be a real big barrier for me to play this game because at the end, I just feel wanting. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, all right, See, you know. I take that and I put it back in investing into the game again. No, but I find it to be a, I think it will actually be a barrier for me to play because I keep, it's, I'm wanting more and I don't, I don't see how I can get that you know, feel good to actually get somewhere. I'm not anywhere. I couldn't do anything. <laughs> it was very annoying. <laughs> but I do like a lot of the mechanisms in here, and I hope they do something. I, I, or are we just going to, you know, it's going to be what my parents did with Oh, I know what you're going to do. I already knew as soon as the first time we played, you were going to try to adapt the rules and play longer. And I'm like, no, that's not what you're supposed to do. I know what you're not. I, I, I hear the words that you're saying, but I, what I am saying I is that. I like it with the ending the way it did. No, I, I don't. It, it was nice that it was in my favor, but I, I, I don't. personally I, I think don't. you have to play for the length of the game. You know what it's going to be when it's coming to an end. It's not like it's a surprise ending. It's got three rounds from the very beginning and you're marking them down each time. The Eclipse could, happens and at that point the game's over and you know it's coming so you got to play pick your strategy based on i i spent my last round burning my tiles i that was my i only tried way. but like i required a bunch of resources and i feel like that was not maybe worth it yeah. um well you took two of those two of those resources because ones. all i had was that like i had to take a green one and both of them were resource transference um yeah, I mean, I found myself in a situation where my architect was being a jerk and was always in the wrong spot every time. Well, but I was planning it right, but I, I feel like I was doing something wrong. I, whatever. Yes. Anyway, I mean, so end of day, there's a lot of interesting mechanisms in yeah. here. It's a lot more crunchier than I originally anticipated, which is a good thing. Absolutely like it's a good, good like it was a good step up. It's, you know, media, it's a good medium level like you gotta have, there's a timing bit that you've got to think. Um, I am really concerned that for me, this game has to have another round. Yeah. I, I really do feel that way. Well the, well, the frustrating thing is if you like take Foundations of Rome in this one, I like the mechanics of this game better than Foundations of Rome. I do. I, but I love the pieces, the look and the, everything about Foundations of Rome is so wonderful. But, I, I, but the gameplay of this one is better. But I still have to have another round for this one. I would rather play <laughs> Foundations of Rome, even though I like the mechanisms of this better, because this is too short. Yeah. Foundations of Rome, you feel like you got somewhere. This, I really didn't feel like I got to do anything. Well, Foundations of Rome is absolutely out of necessity going to fill the board. So you don't have to worry about it not filling the board. It's so nice. <laughs> It's a completionist dream. Exactly. Whereas this one is exactly. definitely, if you are you know, someone who has to have everything completed, That's you're me. going to be disappointed. That's it's not me. about maxing. It's about taking advantage of the, the opportunities for scoring and figuring out what is the best path for you. And those kind of games, if you let them run to their fruition, they are not going to be a very good game because everybody would max everything no, out. No, I, I just need one more round. Just one more round. <laughs> I really do think if I had one more, I want to play this at four player count to see if I, that I extra play four player count Because too. if that extra round is what I needed, well then, gush, <laughs> you know, it might be why I'm only playing it at four player. You know, that's kind of how I'll look at it. 
Okay. As long as they don't take workers away from me during those rounds. No, they do. Every round you're No, no, every round I lose one, but not like but you're gonna start with less workers. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, give it a score. I'm probably an eight on the gameplay. I, I think I can't remember where I was on Foundations of Rome, but I like this one slightly better than Foundations of Rome from a gameplay perspective. I wish that you know the pieces were of that quality, but you know, and it, I really hate the scoring track. Uh, those two things, but apart from that, the mechanics of this game were very interesting. And you know, even though, like I said, the architect was a complete jerk to me the entire game, even though I knew where he was going to be, trying to plan him, that didn't mesh with my thought patterns. So I ended up with all my tiles in the wrong spot. How many times did I catch you say, baby, you can't build there, baby, you can't build there? <laughs> Early, yes. Uh, yeah, I know, I and know. then your dad had built the pyramid where we wanted, which we didn't have catch until later. But yeah, I mean, it's it's very it's a it's a lot of mental processes working at the same time because you're you're focused on scoring, but then you got to all worry about where your tiles are going to fall, and it, you've got to plan that ahead. Like you said, I can't I can't think those many dimensions all at once. I'm I have to be kind of down the same path, and it, so I ended up after a while. I just said, forget the pyramid. I'm going to focus on these tiles, and at that point, I I took off on score. And that's how I ended up winning. I don't think it'll work again, but I worked that game. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I can see that. So for me, for me, it left me wanting, right? And normally that's a good thing, but I think it, it was such a big gap from, like, I really didn't feel like I accomplished anything. Like, it was almost very sad to me because I was like, wait, what? I didn't. I didn't even get to do my ground level. I didn't even get to fill a portion. Like, it was just kind of depressing. So, in that instance, I feel bad because I love so many. I love the I love the architect moving around and only being able to place certain sections. I love the fact that you can use other people's powers or get a bonus if you're the first one to go there. I, or deciding to increase the power that. I liked all of those, and it's a shame because... I'm hoping at four player and getting that fourth round will help me alleviate some of this. Because <laughs> I am a little annoyed. <laughs> so what's your score? What'd you give it? I gave it an eight. What'd we give? Rome. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking it was somewhere close to that. Mm. I'm probably, I'm going to give this a seven because if I had another round, I'd probably give it an eight. <laughs> it's really that bad, guys. I'm too much of a completionist. I can't help this. I'm playing a Tetris game. I play it to fill it. You do realize when you play Tetris, the tiles disappear. So you can never fill it other than to lose. And even then, you didn't fill it because you would have kept it. I empty it out. I, I have a complete empty board. That's my goal for that one. <laughs> Duh, don't you but, do what, that? but at the end of the game, it's going to fill up and you're going to have like holes all over the place. No, you that get so many you. points and you get a blank thing and you call it. Well, that's why a game ends. It sucks that it ends. So anyway, <laughs> overall, guys, I mean, no, I, I listen at the end of the day, you should at least go play it. See if this is your cup of tea. And, you know, yeah. and I mean, if you house rule it to add another round, I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Brandy, though. Yeah, I, I, Brandy. I, would, I will come personally to your home and say, no, you can't do that. Um, You know, and that might be all that it takes to fix it. Like I said, four players already has four rounds, so maybe that will help significantly. Um, so we'll have to see it when we play it at four players. But overall, I do think that this is a good uh, – come on. You need to check it out. I think you need to check it out. So, all right, guys. I had a fun. Did you have fun? I had fun. All right, catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.